So Descartes' first task is to use what we've called foundationalism to knock down a bunch of really lousy beliefs. Doing this, right, it's like imploding a building. He's going to take it down from the, bow from the bottom and the whole top is going to come tumbling down. This is a great way to get rid of lousy beliefs, to, to get rid of doubtful beliefs. What he's also going to use foundationalism to do is to rebuild his beliefs in a way that's trustworthy. Right? And if you want to have a trustworthy building, you need to have a good foundation, otherwise the top will wobble over the, all over the place. Even if you build the top perfectly, if the bottom is wobbly, there's no, there's no good is going to come of this. So Descartes is going to look for a perfectly undoubtable, trustworthy belief, and he wants to use this as his, as his foundation, and he's going to build up the rest of his beliefs in a trustworthy, solid way on top of these. How's he going to do it? Well, it seems like Right, what Descartes needs to do is to show falsity. He needs to show that, that beliefs that he thinks are true but are actually untrue are really untrue, they're false. He says, I don't need to do this. What I need to do instead is just show that they're doubtful, that they're not 100% sure. Now, there's a, there's a common mis misconception here to say that Descartes really thinks that any belief that's doubtful is absolutely false. That's just not true. He's doing an experiment here. And he's, if he's looking for an absolutely trustworthy, 100% certain belief to use the foundation, Right? You can't allow any doubt into the system. So when he's looking for his perfect foundational belief, it may as well be false if it's doubtful. In the same way that, you know, if, if you're having someone build you a house, and they say, yeah, the foundation, there's like a 90% chance that the, that the house won't come tumbling down on your head. Of course you're not satisfied by this, right? You want an absolutely solid foundation. This is what Descartes is doing, too. And so when he rejects these doubtful beliefs, it's not that he really thinks they're false. It's just that he really needs a perfectly solid foundation to work from. So he's going to start doubting his beliefs using three methods, and each will successively knock down more and more beliefs. It's important, again, to note that Descartes doesn't actually believe that everything he doubts is really false. Right? We're going to come back to this again and again, because it's so tempting to think that Descartes is this crazy person who's just going to throw out um, absurd ideas. So he's going to say some things that sound really crazy, but he's doing the philosophical equivalent of an experiment. Right, so just as a biologist or a physicist in an experiment might assume something in order to study other things, right? So we assume, it's, economics does this all the time, right? We assume people act perfectly rationally. And then we say, well, based on that, you know, what can we say? Descartes is going to do the same thing. He's going to assume some crazy things. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily true, right? He can then come back later and say, okay, well, that's not really true. But if it were, right, this could have some troubling implications. So his first method is he's going to look at our senses. And he says, well, senses aren't perfectly trustworthy. I know that sometimes when I look at things, um, they don't look like what they actually are, right? And this is a really easy one to prove to yourself. Um, of, of course, it's getting cool out now, but if, you, if you're driving down the road in, uh, in deep summertime and you look at a, a road far ahead, right? It can look like it's wet or sort of shimmering and hazy. It's not really wet, right? You get close and it's, it's just sort of the air was hazy or fuzzy because of the heat uh, coming over, over the road. Uh, similarly, you know, we just don't see all that well things that are far away. Um, some of us wear glasses. We hear, we hear funny sounds sometimes that aren't really there. So sense data isn't a perfect trustworthy foundation, right? It can be doubted. But here's the upside. We can fix sense data pretty easily, right? Um, you can find out that the road isn't really wet by driving up to it and checking. You can see whether whether there's uh, you know, someone in the house with you late at night by walking into the other room and turning on the light. So doubting too much would be sort of sort of crazy, right? Because we can we can fix it when our senses trick us. Here's the trouble. Descartes says that if I really doubted my senses all the time, I'd be a crazy person. But crazy people are an awful lot like us when we're asleep. This is something we're thinking about. When, you, when you're when you asleep, you're essentially insane. Right? I've, I've heard it uh, referred, suggested before, that when we go to, you know, it, sleep is absurd, if you think about it, right? We, we basically fall unconscious and hallucinate for eight hours a night. And we think this is perfectly normal, right? This is this is very strange. And so Descartes is, uh, is going to latch on to the fact that dreaming is really weird. And so, sure, you know, we can we can find out when our senses are tricking us, but we also have this funny state called sleeping, called dreaming, where, uh, hmm, things aren't quite what they seem like. And so the first method, right, he's going to doubt the senses, but he's going to let that go. This is going to lead him to the, to the second method, and that's uh, the issue of what if I'm dreaming? And we'll talk about that in our next video.